Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your analysis for the 29th of January. I'm recording the video 4.45pm Eastern Standard Time just after New York's closed. We got the little bit of downwards movement I expected. I'm expecting it's very close to completion. It should end early in tomorrow's session. And then we're either going to have a third wave at minor degree up to new highs or we're going to have a small correction to end about 1793.78. The price point now that differentiates our main and alternate wave counts is 1839.89. The next upwards movement, if it moves above that price point, will tell us we haven't had a trend change at cycle or intermediate degree. If it doesn't move above that price point, if it's much shallower and choppy and overlapping, it's just a small correction and we'll expect more downwards movement after that. This is the crucial point where our wave counts start to diverge and we'll start to get some information about what the situation is at the monthly chart level. Let's have a look at some charts. Here's the main wave count which is bearish, expecting that we are getting towards the end of a cycle degree B wave. When it's done we'll have a cycle degree C wave down. Only because we should always assume that the trend remains the same am I assuming that intermediate wave 5 is not complete. I've moved the degree of labelling here within this upwards wave down 1 degree. This may be just minor wave 1 and now 2 almost complete within intermediate wave 5. At the daily chart level we'll have this wave count confirmed with movement above 1850.84 and a third wave must move beyond the end of the first wave. This idea requires movement to a new high. If that happens and price keeps going up, then on the way up, if it moves above 1858.03, this bearish wave count will swap over at the monthly chart level with my bullish alternate. Because above that point, cycle B would be longer than the maximum common length of 138% in relation to cycle wave A. And when B waves get longer than that common length, the probability that a big flash is unfolding must reduce. For this main wave count, minor wave 2, if it continues further, may not move beyond the start of 1, below 1646.47. Let's have a look at how this possible zigzag subdivides on the hourly chart where it begins here, this point here. Zigzag subdivide 5, 3, 5 and this one is extremely close to completion. Within minute wave C we have 1, 2, 3 has a nice ratio of 4.236 to the length of 1, 4 didn't complete with that tiny little bit of upwards movement I had expected. It was already over here as a double combination, sorry, a double zigzag. This is where the final fifth wave is beginning and it looks like it's unfolding as an ending contracting diagonal on the five minute chart. All these subwaves are zigzags and the final fifth wave is really close to completion. At 1766, Minuet wave 5 would reach 1.618 the length of minuet wave 1 and I would also expect downwards movement for this contracting diagonal to end at the 1.3 trend line right here. So I'm expecting just a really small amount of downwards movement to begin tomorrow's session and then that's when our wave counts start to diverge. The next upwards movement if it moves above 1839.89 would provide confirmation that this downward wave is a completed 3, so corrections are to the downside, and so above that price point I'd have confidence that we're in a third wave up. At the daily chart, alternatively, if we simply move the degree of labelling within intermediate wave 5 or up 1 degree again, it is entirely possible we have had a trend change here at cycle degree. Cycle wave C should last one to several years and should move price substantially beyond the end of cycle wave A of this huge flat correction below 666.79. The target is 454.15 where cycle C would reach 1.618 the length of cycle wave A. 
and I would consider this wave count confirmed with price movement below 1646.47. 1, 2, 3 and ABC have exactly the same subdivisions. It's when that's done and we get into either a fourth wave correction or the end of the zigzag is when the wave counts diverge. This alternate idea expects one, two, three, and now a fourth wave. Let's have a look at this on the hourly chart. One, two, three, so close to completion. This wave count then expects a small fourth wave correction, which may show up on the daily chart as one or two green candlesticks or dojis. Four may not move into wave one price territory, this wave count is invalidated with movement above 1839.89. That price point is extremely important to us at this stage. It tells us which wave count is correct. I'd expect, if we're looking at a fourth wave correction for the next day or two, to see it end around about the end of the fourth wave of one lesser degree, about 1793.78, and I need to fix my labels here, WX and here. When that's done for this alternate idea, if price remains below the invalidation point and completes a small fourth wave and we see a following fifth wave down, then at the daily and the hourly chart we would have a nice clear five wave structure downwards and if that happens, this very bearish wave count would become my main wave count. I've drawn a channel using Elliot's first technique around this unfolding impulse. It will have to be redrawn tomorrow if price moves slightly lower to start as I expect it should. Draw the first trend line from the end of 1 to wherever 3 has ended and then place a copy first on the end of 2 but push it out to sit on the end of this second wave and that pushed out upper trend line may be where the fourth wave finds resistance. At the daily chart level, this is a bullish alternate, but it doesn't diverge from the very bearish wave count and it won't for quite some time. We may have had a trend change either at cycle degree or at intermediate degree at this point right here. If we've had a trend change at intermediate degree, then intermediate wave 2 should breach the lower edge of the blue channel which I have drawn on the weekly chart around intermediate wave 1. Second wave should breach the channel containing the first wave. It should subdivide as a, as a corrective structure. It's most likely to be a zigzag. That's look like, that looks like what it could be, with A subdividing to a 5, then we'd have B and C. Intermediate wave 2 should find support, strong support, at the lower edge of the very big maroon channel, which I am copying over from the monthly chart. If price breaches the lower edge of that maroon channel on the monthly chart, this bullish wave count would be discarded in favour of the very bearish wave count. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis and I hope that all our members are having a fabulous day.